Hello everybody and welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm from the computer vision group in Jena and I would like to present a work done by three of us, uh, namely the end-to-end -end learning of visual vector encodings for part features in fine-grained recognition. So first I would like to motivate and give the basics of the Fischer Vector Encoding. Afterwards I will show you our main contributions to this topic. And afterwards, last but not least, uh, the results of the experiments. So the problem of using a part-based classifier with an unsupervised part detector that we cannot really ensure that the return parts are semantically consistent. For example, if we have a part laying on the bird's head, it may be at the first position, the second position, or even missing. And then we have to think about imputing some features before we can pass this to our classifier. A straightforward way to solve this is to do an orderless encoding, for example, a Fisher vector encoding, in order to ensure that we have a fixed length unified representation, which is able to handle the arbitrary ordering of the parts and also missing parts, so basically a variable number of features. Formally, the Fisher vector encoding is defined as a gradient of the log likelihoods with respect to the parameters of the underlying generative model P. If we assume further a independence of the two encoded features, then we can just sum up of these gradients and the resulting encoding does not change in the dimensionality. If we further assume that our generative model is a Gaussian mixture model with diagonal covariance matrices and we approximate the Fisher information matrix as proposed by Peronin et al., then we end up with the following formulation of the Fisher vector encoding. Further, it is straightforward to see that all of the operations are differentiable and it is easy to implement this in current deep learning frameworks. Besides others, Vishalik et al. present their implementations and we think this is one of the pr most promising and uh, reasonable implementations because they ensure also the constraints for some of the GMM parameters. For example, the prior weights that should be summed up to one and also the non-negative variances. As a result, the following parameters are then optimized with the gradient descent end-to-end -end with the entire classification pipeline. On the other hand, in our opinion, the estimation of the parameters with a stochastic gradient descent violates the definition of Fisher vector encoding. Actually, it is based on a generative model, but we don't have any certainty that the parameters that they estimated in this way actually describe the input features properly. Hence, we propose in our paper an alternative way of estimating the GMM parameters. So given the following classification pipeline, where we have our input image with part locations, we use uh, a part CNN to extract convolutional maps of, from these parts and use a Fisher vector encoding layer to uh, encode this to a unified representation feature. That is finally then, uh, together with the global feature, used by the classification layers to classify the entire image. But instead of learning the GMM parameters with a stochastic gradient descent, we use an EM algorithm with mini batch updates. Basically, this is the same operation which is done in a batch normalization where you accumulate over the batches the statistics of your input features, but here in our case, we perform the same op or similar operations uh, for a Gaussian mixture model. More formally, for each batch, we uh, perform an E and M step where we compute the new GMM parameters. Then, using the exponential moving average, same as in the batch norm layer, we update the statistics of our GMM parameters. Additionally, we perform a bias correction since uh, exponential moving average is a biased estimator. This is also performed in a similar way in the Adam optimizer in the update rules of the parameters. Now let's come to our experiments and the evaluations of the experiments. First, we uh, report the accuracy on some benchmark data sets with parts extracted in an unsupervised manner. Besides the results uh, reported in other works, we also report two baselines. The first one is just a classification accuracy without parts, and the second one is classification accuracy with parts, but these are encoded with global average pooling 
and then subsequently uh, concatenated. In the last rows, you see uh, the implementations of our Fisher vector encoding layer with two different GMM parameter estimation methods. So first of all, the gradient-based estimation like it is presented by Vishalik et al. And the last row shows our EM-based estimation method. The first thing which you can see is actually that the accuracy doesn't really uh, differentiate much between these two estimation methods. But both of the Fisher vector encoding methods are able to outperform the global average pooling and also the first baseline. And also we're able to uh, set new state-of-the-art results on these three data sets. In our next experiment, we wanted to uh, observe the precision of the estimated uh, Gaussian mixtures. So that's why we use the so-called weighted Mahalanobis distance, which is actually normalized Euclidean distance weighted by the soft uh, assignment of each feature. So this is closely rela related to the log likelihood of the observed feature, but it has a more reasonable geometrical interpretation. So it shows how many uh, standard deviations is the feature away from the mean of each cluster. So first we applied this metric on a generated data, where we arranged the arbitrary number of clusters, in our case five clusters on a unit circle, and set the variance to one divided by n. As our baseline, we use the offline EM algorithm to estimate the GMM parameter. So basically, it sees all of the data instead of only batches of it. On the right, you see two graphs for k equals 5 to match the number of clusters and k equals 1 as a special case of a GMM. You also see that not depending on the feature dimensionality, our proposed uh, estimation methods is able to match the baseline nearly perfectly, whereas the gradient-based estimation method doesn't really estimate the parameters well. And if we take a look at the 2D data, where we see the GMM initialization and the GMM parameters after the training, then we see that our online EM algorithm manages to match the data better than the gradient-based method for both k equals 5 and k equals 1. Finally, we performed the same evaluation for the benchmark datasets, and we see that our proposed EM, online EM algorithm estimates the parameters more precisely than the gradient-based method. Thank you for your attention, and I would be glad to answer your questions in the chat.